Happy Friday to everybody. Love the happiness in the chat. Nowhere else we'd rather be than a Zoom chat conversation. Mostly junior high teams today, is that correct? Some of these names coming in. Jack says yes. Go Rangers, all right. All right, well, we are coming up on 1.30 on a Friday afternoon. We'll have a few folks joining in this, uh, this afternoon as they're uh, hopefully enjoying some good lunch and camaraderie. Uh, I don't know about all of you, but for us, uh, it's great to step back. Um, it's been hard to step away uh, to connect with our colleagues and our peers and just uh, really share and um, kind of catch up on well, all of our uh, extraordinary uh, activities uh, the last few weeks. Uh, today, uh, we're thrilled that you're joining us. Uh, we've, uh, we hope that we're starting to build confidence in just walking in the front door of this pretty large canvas building, uh, house, whatever uh, metaphor you want to provide. Uh, and as we get into the, the content today, it's deep and it's great. It's exciting because it's, it's modules and grading, grade books, and really some neat, exciting tools. Uh, but our continual encouragement is to try and keep our focus in on uh, just that first pillar of distance learning, which is communicating and connecting with our families, uh, establishing how are we going to show up together uh, every morning? Um, where are my links going to be in my uh, Canvas virtual classroom? Um, when am I available for families and making connections? A lot of you are doing that this week. Uh, so we know that's already started, um, getting a jump start on a lot of that. Um, if something today is really overwhelming, um, an encouragement, we are getting these all on YouTube. Uh, they will be live uh, sometime this evening or tomorrow, uh, as soon as we can. Uh, we have a few glitches on our YouTube, but it's all good. Uh, we will push through that. Uh, and if you haven't opened up the chat, uh, please take a minute to do that. Um, so if you're on a Chromebook and, and multitasking is not too exciting for you, uh, take a picture of the screen, um, type it in your phone, um, quick and easy uh, way to get attendance taken care of. Uh, make sure you're in Canvas and not distance learning today. Uh, sometimes the links on uh, the afternoon sessions are similar. Uh, so we're all about Canvas this afternoon. If you're uh, in distance learning, we'll see you later. Have a great Friday afternoon. And uh, I'm sure the team of TOSAs are going to provide an excellent afternoon. Uh, you know us. Uh, we've been here with you all week. Um, just super thankful again uh, for uh, Jill, Shelly, Rafaela, the whole team. Um, Jill's uh, been kind of traditional learning cycles and distance learning now, feet in two worlds, and Shelly's all in and um, helping us put all the content together, making sure that it's seamless and just enough, not too much for you. Uh, so thank you very much, Jill and Shelly, uh, for your hard work this week. Uh, and hopefully we're able to provide for you uh, what you need. Uh, if we're not, uh, we definitely want to know that and help us improve. Uh, another thing, um, webinar, we did this yesterday, the day before, the day before, uh, but the key piece about the webinar is this Q&A doc. And you guys uh, did an excellent job a couple days ago on Q&A. Uh, Q&A is again live. Um, it's pretty rich. Uh, it's got a lot of content in there. Um, one suggestion for you, you can do the highlight and hit that comment button and then put a little plus sign and type your email. Um, however, the Q&A doc has a lot of content on it. So if you have a question about grades, you can hold down the control button and hit F for find and then type in your, your topic like grades and it'll show 
highlight for you in the in the Q&A doc all the places that grades are already talked about and questions are answered. So that's the control button and the F button and then type in your topic. That could be helpful for you. Um, some of you, uh, let's see, what else do I do? If you haven't logged in, uh, we, we are in Canvas today. Uh, we are really getting into what's a module. Um, you know, we start from the big course, which we are providing, uh, but then we're gonna work in the, the modules. What exactly is in a module? How do we add to it? How do we supplement? Um, and how do we, uh, how do we really make it look like we want it to and what our kids need? And uh, speaking of content, so here's where we're going. The big pieces are our courses and modules. Um, the rich content editor, the best way to think about the rich content editor is like starting with a blank page in a Google Doc and you've got all the bar of all the different tools up top. Um, that rich content editor is kind of like that blank document for you where everything will start. You can pull in all sorts of exciting uh, media and, and all, all sorts of tools that we're going to help you out with. And then we're going to go down into grading and why, um, even though Synergy is our main grade book, why it might be really a helpful place for us to use SpeedGrader to set up rubrics so that we can grade quickly through rubrics and, and use the SpeedGrader speed grader settings, uh, but also so that when we communicate back and forth, with our students, uh, possibly some of our families uh, in junior high, uh, that we're not uh, doubling or tripling the amount of work. So uh, yes, it's definitely two places, Canvas and Synergy. It doesn't sync. Uh, we mentioned that already, but um, it does help provide a, a more efficient way, kind of like Google Classroom. Um, so what is provided? Uh, we've said a few times, uh, three weeks, of core curriculum. But in addition to that, the very first week of social emotional learning courses for your students, uh, uh, digital citizenship courses are already built in. So when you log in, you're going to see these courses and your students in these courses, uh, as well as the EL course uh, for your students. Um, some of the things that you won't see uh, or that you will see, but you won't uh, manipulate our tiles, banners, and the buttons in these core courses. They, they're not able to be changed or personalized. The scales that we're providing for all of the weeks um, are very similar so that when students go into their classroom, the classroom, so to speak, virtual classroom, looks the same. We want to break down all the process struggles and just get right into good conversation and good um, content and instruction. And that's a key reason why they're all going to look very similar uh, for our students uh, so that they've got that um, ease with which they're in the virtual space. And uh, so week four and on, as I just mentioned, those, those shells will be there. Um, as we're adding in our supplemental curriculum, um, Dr. Park will talk about this quite a bit next week, uh, but we have a, an accelerated map. And so we just need to make sure that as we supplement that we're staying in line with that map. And I think before I go into our, uh, our quick little quiz in the chat, do we have any, uh, any uh, hot topics or any items we need to address before we go there? There's nothing in the Q&A document right now. No, we're just trying to still get the agenda up. Okay. All right, yes, you may need to refresh your page if the agenda is uh, stalling or not um, uh, loading is the word I was looking for. Um, and why we're talking about uh, Chromebooks, um, if your screen is a little blurry, we've noticed that sometimes the Chromebook cache or the memory um, gets full and powering it all the way off and then powering it all the way back on um, has seemed to help several people in terms of being able to see a Zoom clearly. Uh, maybe it'll work for you, maybe it won't if that's you in that situation. Okay, so true or false? We'll see who's been reading ahead and watching some videos. So in a course, when I go to publish a course, so I've got the big course, let's say it's language arts or let's say it's mathematics. True or false, all the modules that are in that course also get published 
when I published the course. We are, uh, we've had a lot of people doing their homework, I can see. A lot of false, we got a couple true, no, no, no. Okay, all right, well, we had a, a little more of a concise uh, introduction for you today. We wanna get you right into the content. Um, Jill, are you ready to, uh, to take them off the cliff of true and false and kind of show them how that works? All right, I am ready. So let me share my screen. All right, so I'm gonna take you straight to my Canvas dashboard. So what you're going to see here is that I have some course cards here. Some of my courses are published and some of them are not published. What published means is that students will be able to see these course cards on their dashboard. Unpublished means that they won't see those courses on their dashboard. So I've brought courses over from Commons or I've created my own, which is why I have some courses here. It's very possible that when you first enter this area, you may not see anything here. I want to talk you through or walk you through one more time about how you find courses on, on your dashboard. How do you get them there? So in order to do that, you're going to click courses. When you click courses, you're going to click all courses. And when I do that, you're going to see that all of my courses are here. If it has a star that's colored in, that means it's a published, um, does not mean it's published. That means it is on my dashboard. If I unclick it, it's not going to be, I'm going to remove it from my dashboard. Okay, now <clears throat> it's very possible that when PBV USD pushes out courses to you, um, you'll be able to find those courses here. You may be able to see them at the bottom. Another way that it's possible for you to see those courses is that there may be a little bar at the top that asks you to accept those courses. So you would need to accept your course and then you would find them in your list. So now that I know where my courses are, I want to go into a course and see what's there. So I'm going to go into this um, world history seventh grade course. As we open up this course, we're going to see that it takes us straight to the home page. Over here, you're going to see this course status. Right now I have this course published, it's green. If I click unpublish, it's going to turn red. And now it is not going to be visible on my student's dashboard. So in order for this course to be visible on my student's dashboard, we have to tell, the, tell it that, we have to publish it so that students can see that course. So to publish it, you click the publish button and it turns green. Students will be able to see the course card on their dashboard, but they won't be able to see any content within that course unless I go and publish that information. As you're working on your course, you can publish and unpublish this as many times as you want. The thing you need to know is that once a grade is, um, once an assignment is graded, then it stay, it's public and it's going to stay that way. So what we've done right now is we've published and unpublished this course, right? But now I want to be able to look at the content within that course. So over here on the left hand side, right here, I'm going to click modules. When I click modules, it's going to take me to um, 
this area where it's like a structure for all of my information, all right? Uh, think of it like courses would be like your subject areas. And then your modules will be more like your units within that subject area. Another teacher the other day explained it like um, a book, a book. So your course is like the book cover and um, your modules are like the chapters within that book. So that may help some of your thinking. Now, I want you to notice that there's um, each one of these little sections is a module. On mine, I see that this top bar is just a little bit darker than the other bars. That's my module title. So what I want to also show you is that when you see this circle with the line through it, when you click it, it unpublishes and it's just clear. If you click it again, it's going to publish that module. Did you notice that when I published it, it also populated these two areas as being published as well? It's going to automatically publish everything within your module when you say your module is ready to go. But say I really was not ready for all of those pieces to go out to my students. Well, the only thing I have to do is come to those pieces, click them, and now those pieces are unpublished and my students will not be able to see those areas. Down here, you'll see that all of these things are green, which in my head tells me that these are published pieces. However, because my module is not published, all of these pieces are not visible for my students. So what will my students see? So if I go back to home, there's a button over here on the right hand side that says student view. If I click that button, it's going to take me here. Notice that it has like this hot pink bar behind it. That's telling me that I am seeing this course in the student view. If I wanna click modules, I wanna see what my students can see. You'll notice that they're able to see the one module that I published and only the two pieces underneath that module that I kept published. The other pieces are not visible to my students because I wasn't ready for them to see it yet, so I didn't have them published. You'll also realize that I had all sorts of different type of information in my module um, section on my screen, but you don't see any of that here because I didn't publish it. So if I want to leave the student screen, I'm going to click this button at the bottom that says leave student view and it's going to take me back to my module area. So say I wanna add a module. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click this button right here that says plus module. So when I click that button, it'll take me to this section. I need to give my module a name, so Maybe I could say um, growth mindset. So I want my module to be all about growth mindset. A function that I have here is it says lock until. When I think about this, I think about it as like a scheduler. So I can schedule this module to be published at a certain date and time um, if I'm not able to go in and publish it. So if I wanted to do that, I could click that button and then I need to give it a date. So I'm gonna click the calendar and say that I want this module that I'm creating to be available to students on August 30th. And I want them 
it to be open to them at eight o'clock at night. So it's ready on Monday morning. I can click done. And now this module, I can be working on it all this time, but at, on August 30th at eight at night at 8 p.m., this module will become published and it will be viewable to my students. If you don't like that and you just want to publish and unpublish on your own, then you are able to do that. Just don't click this lock button. I see this area as like a personal preference. preference. Sometimes maybe I want to use that feature and sometimes I want to be able to be the one in control of when I publish um, a module for myself or for my class. So once I title my module, I'm going to click this button that says add module. And but I don't see it. So what's going, where do I find my module that I just created? What Canvas does is it populates it down at the very bottom. So you're going to have to go to the very bottom. Try not to go too fast. And you're going to see the module you just created down here at the very bottom. There are a couple ways that I can move my module. One way is that I can just take it over here on the left and on the right, there's these three but the three dots over here you can go ahead and click move module. When you click that, it's going to give you a few options here in this bar. I can move it to the top, I can move it to the bottom, or I can move it before or after a different module. So if I want to move it before a module, it's going to give me a list of all of my modules right here. So when I click that, maybe I want my module, the growth mindset, to come right before week one. So I'll click week one. So I want my module to move before week one. I'm gonna click move. And what you'll see is now I have my growth mindset module right before week one. Um, if I, this is a module that I had from another training, but you can go ahead and delete that module if you don't want it. And then it'll tell you that that was deleted and there you go. Now, what I want to do is publish my module. What will I do? I'll click the circle with the line through it. And then this module now becomes published. If I unclick it, it becomes unpublished. So before I move on to the next section, I just want to see if there are any questions. Q&A wise, you are uh, knocking it out of the park. Uh, right. And uh, possibly we have a lot of folks who did their homework. Awesome. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Good. Okay. So um, the next thing I want to do is just show you how to create your own course and module. Uh, so the first thing you're going to do is go into courses. When you click that, you'll go into all courses. What you're going to see is this plus course up here at the top. You're going to click plus course. You're going to name your course and I'll say, um, Morrison ELA. And all I'm going to do is press this blue button that says create course. And now here's my course. It's like the shell of my course waiting for me to put things in it. <clears throat> I cannot publish a course unless I have something in my course. So I'm going to add a module. I'm going to click this blue button that says plus module. You're going to give it a name. I'm going to give it this one. New thinking is awesome. And I'm going to add my module. Know that you still have this lock until function, just like I showed you before. You add your module. 
Take note that both of these are currently unpublished. So as you create your courses and modules, they are going to come to you unpublished. When you publish them, then they will be visible to your students. But just because I publish a course doesn't mean my module is published. I'm going to have to go in and click the circle with the line through it in order to publish my module so my students will be able to see that. So what we're going to do now is give you just a little bit of time to work on creating a course and a module and then publish and unpublish those and see if you can play around with that a little bit. A lot of very positive feedback on your pacing, Jill. I don't know if you're able to, you may not be seeing the chat, but a lot of I am not. positive feedback. Oh, thank you. I'm good. Uh, a question that's coming in, I think, is probably relevant for everyone. Um, if you're using Google Drive integration, uh, if you if you don't know what that means, that's okay. Uh, but if you haven't, or if you have added Google uh, in, and tried to integrate it into your guest account, it's not always perfect. Uh, their guest accounts, for some reason, the integration piece doesn't work uh, like it normally does work. So just know that in our uh, Panama accounts, that integration is very seamless, uh, even pulls in assignments out of our uh, Google Classroom. So uh, if you're struggling with Google, uh, there you go. All right, it's been about three minutes. So are there any other questions? Okay. Uh, how to add, uh, okay, so there's a question on drive integration. I'll go ahead and take care of that. Okay. I'm sorry, I was trying to research an answer and <laughs> didn't get to my mute button fast enough. Okay. Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing then, and I'm going to hand it over to Shelly. Awesome, thank you, Jill. Let me You're welcome. My screen share here. And hopefully what you are seeing at the moment is my course or my, my modules in my course. And so Jill and I just created the same course. We grabbed the same course. So it looks the same for you. And we've walked through publishing the course and creating a module and publishing a module. And now we're gonna dive into making an assignment and what the specifics of creating an assignment looks like. So I can actually create an assignment here just from my module by clicking the plus button. Jill called her module growth mindset. I just added a module called example. But if I wanted to add a, an assignment from right here, I can just click the add or the plus sign. 
And when I do that, you'll notice if you click the drop down, you can actually add any component to the course from this space. So you could add an assignment, a quiz, a file, a page, a discussion. So anything you'd like to create and add to your module, you can do that here. You can also grab components that you've created in those specific tabs. So if I created a quiz in the quizzes section, I could add that here. I can add any of the other assignments that I may have created in the assignment section. I could add those here. But for the purpose of creating an assignment and a new one at that, I'm going to click new assignment and I'm going to give my assignment a name. And so I've done this a few times already, but we're just kind of sticking with the Friday is fun theme. And I give my assignment a name and then I can decide how far I would like that to indent so that in my module as I'm looking at it and as students see it, they see the layering and organization. So I can choose to indent it once or twice and I just click add item. So you'll see my new assignment Friday is fun just populated here at the bottom of my module. I have the same ability to move my assignments within my module. I have the ability with the settings to do the same thing or even increase the indent if I want to do that as well. But when I create an assignment and I open it up, I'll give it a second, it is just a blank shell. So at this point, there's no content and there are no settings for this assignment. So in order to add anything, I have to click edit. And at this point, my rich content editor is going to appear. So I want you to note the way the icons and formatting above the box look, because this is how the rich content editor appears. And the rich content editor is just a little more friendly and allows us to really work with our apps that are built into Canvas. So if when we receive our Panama accounts, this is not our view, I want to show you how to make sure you have the rich content editor. So I'm gonna walk through this process. It's a one-time process for your course. So if you wanna take notes, great. If you um, have already watched the video, then you already know how to do this, or you have the video and you can repeat the process steps. But I'm gonna go down to settings at the very bottom I'm gonna click on settings. And then these are just tabs across the top for various settings within my course. And I'm gonna to come to the last one, feature options. And about three quarters of the way down the screen, you're gonna notice I have this RCE enhancements and my button is green with a check mark. So this is now turned on for my course. RCE stands for Rich Content Editor. So I'm actually gonna turn it off just so you can see what it looks like when it's not turned on. So I'm gonna go back to my assignment. And you'll notice that my options visually look a lot different. And so we are just letting you know that the rich content editor has more options, features, and functions. And so you're probably going to want to use the rich content editor. So if your screen happens to look the way mine does now, you'll need to turn the rich content editor on. And again, we go to settings, we go to feature options, and we go to rich content editor, and I'm going to turn that on. And then when I go back to my assignment, I will see that I have my rich content editor. So before I jump into what each of these pieces does, I want to just this is kind of a two for one in the sense that this is what it looks like when I'm building from scratch, but it's also what it looks like when I have pulled content in from commons or when content has been pushed out to me. And so I'm actually going to jump. It's my same account, but this is or the other account where I created an assignment. No, I'm going to jump. Sorry, let me find my spot to an assignment that I've created here so you can see it. So if I go to Fun Friday, yes. All right, so this was the example that I used in the last training. So it just has some content in it so we can kind of see what this begins to look like. As I begin to work across the bar and what these different settings are, you'll notice now there's content in the content editor. And so if I'm going to change anything or add anything, whether it's from scratch or adapting something that I've already um, received, 
I'm going to do that here. And so I can change the font size. I can change the headings. Uh, these are all things we mostly recognize, bold, italicize, underline. I can change the color. I can highlight. And then this T with the two is our super, superscript and subscript options. So here I have my alignment. I could move it back. Um, I can create bullets. So these are all, again, just features that we're pretty comfortable and familiar with, especially in our Google Docs. Uh, but these are probably more of the features and functions that we will be utilizing. So this is a hyperlink. And I actually have a hyperlink here in my course. But I have two different types of links. So external means that it's going to take me outside of Canvas and place me somewhere else on the internet. So whether that's an interactive website that I want students to use, whether that's a Google site that I've built, wherever that is, it just means it's outside of Canvas. And then if it is a course link, it means that it's going to link then take them directly somewhere else within the course. And so I can link both ways. So to create an external link, I can either highlight some text and then it'll make that word or set of words a hyperlink, or I can start from scratch and just click somewhere else on my page. I'll come down here to the end and insert an external link. So I can add text here. Um, let's see, have fun solving. If I can type uh, this puzzle. And I can grab a link just from outside and I found this fun puzzle. You can actually drag and drop it and try to manipulate the puzzle until you get it correct. And so I'm just gonna grab the URL here, the web address. I'm gonna copy it, control C, and go back to my assignment. And I'm going to paste the link, control V. And when I do that right here, you're gonna notice that the wording that I placed in the box is there. And if the student clicks here, it's gonna take them to that website that I dropped the web address in for. And so that's an external link. If I wanted to create an internal link, I actually have one right here. I just click link and course links. And now I have the ability to add or create a link to any component in my course. So a student can just click on it and it will take them straight there. So I could grab, let's see, thesis and grievances. And so now I have that link here. I'm actually gonna just delete some of this really fast for the purposes of being able to see what we're doing. If I want to add an image, which you see I've done here, I can go to images and I have the ability to upload. So if I've found images or I have files with images that I like to use, I can drag and drop those or upload those from a file folder in my computer. I also have the ability to search Unsplash. Uh, so let's see if we just did puzzle. Uh, these are the photos that are associated with that key search word. And these are photos that have been, the photographer has given us the rights to use them. So they've already handed over that permission and we don't have to worry about it as educators that were accidentally, or that will be in trouble for using an image and not correctly citing it. Um, so this is just a nice way to search for images and know that you are able and have permission to use them within your courses. And then we have the ability to grab a link. So if I have a great image on another website that I'd like to use, I can again grab the web address, highlight it, copy it and paste it right here in the bar. And if there's um, attribution information where I can give credit for that photo, then this alternative text might be a good place to do it. Or I should go ahead and give credit right underneath the photo in my assignment or my page. We want to just model that practice for our students as well. So that's uploading an image, and I'm going to close that. I can also upload media, so a video. If I had created a video on my computer, I could go ahead and upload that here. If I, let's say I created a video and then I downloaded it even on my Chromebook, I could upload it here. I can even record a video from right here if I want to explain the instructions, if I would like to uh, just deliver a message to the students about um, what we're going to be doing or, or maybe even 
um, just what the overview of the content is going to look like. I can start recording. And right now you're not seeing my face or a visual image because my camera is engaged in our Zoom call, but you can tell that it's recording and it's recording my voice. And when I hit finish, I click save. I could change the title, but I'm just gonna click save. And now it's gonna drop that right into my course. And so I really just created a video on the spot and dropped it here into my assignment. We can use our studio, like the videos from studio, we can use videos from outside wherever we have them, whether that's through a hyperlink, whether that's through adding the media here, or I'll show you in a second using the studio app within Canvas. So I can grab media from other places in the course if I've already uploaded and or created somewhere else in my course a piece that I want to bring back in. Or if I have files, I've added these videos to a file in my course, I can grab the videos from there. We do have the ability to upload documents. This is really only going to be used, this page uh, piece, when we are grabbing documents from like Microsoft Office or Word or PowerPoint, those types of products where we are going to really upload, or even a PDF where you're going to upload a document to this assignment. But we tend to live more in the Google universe, so I'm going to show you that with my favorite button, this plug. Um, I love the idea uh, that the plug represents energy and this idea of connection and engagement for students. And so this is my apps button. Now this is my free teacher account. So I do not have very many apps associated with my free teacher account. You'll notice there's not much here. If I jump over to my county training account and I click on the same button, you'll notice I have quite a few more apps. We don't have the exhaustive list of apps that we will have integrated, especially up front, um, but we will work on collecting and getting a list of the apps available to you as we have that. We know you have the Canvas Studio, so here is where you could go grab those videos from your studio and embed them into your assignments. This is what a lot of you would like to know, how do I add the content from my Google Drive into my assignment? And so we are going to use this Google Drive LTI. It'll actually go away in a little while. We have Google Assignments replacing it. Um, but we can do that through Google Apps or Google Drive. And we will go in depth in a, a different training on all of our Google pieces. And then we have, obviously, we have YouTube and a few other things. So this plug is where you're going to find your apps. And that's where we're going to connect with our Google Drives and be able to import the content. And you can see I've actually done that here in the sandbox. I added just a quick template of deconstructing a Ricky Ticky prompt here. Let me go back to my free account. And a couple other things to point out as I'm building in my rich content editor, we have the ability to add a table and we have our math equation editor. This is beautiful. I don't know about you. I really struggle with building equations, even just in a Google Doc. Um, anything beyond an addition, subtraction, or multiplication problem, the formatting, especially fractions and things like that, gets a little sticky. And so we can build our math equations here, and it will drop them into our assignment. And you'll notice it dropped something, but it, I didn't build anything at that point. So if I had added an equation there, it would have done that. It would have brought it in. I think it's important to know that this rich content editor looks the same for a quiz, it looks the same for a page, the same for a discussion. So any component of Canvas that we're using where we have to add content, we are gonna be working from the rich content editor. And if remembering what all of these things do um, is difficult, we have provided in the agenda a visual. So there's a, just a standard file, it's a hyperlink that you can look at that will walk you through what those are. And then we've also linked, I believe it's a three minute video, three minute ish video going over just this feature of the rich content editor. And we also have 
another uh, fancy feature of the rich content editor, a drop down menu. So if this is more intuitive because this works a little more like a Google Doc or a Microsoft Word document, uh, then know that if you hover, you have these features as a drop down as well. All right, so that was a big chunk. And we're going to stop and give you a few minutes to process and to practice. Hey, Before Shelly. I send you off to your task, do we have questions? Yeah, I was just going to say, um, the very first three or four minutes, um, pacing wise, we had a lot of questions of where you were at and, and can you go back to how you got to where you're at right now. So maybe just like if you sure. could review the first couple steps of even just getting to the content editor. Absolutely. So we started in modules. So I'm going to go right back to my modules. And we created a module by clicking the plus or an, an assignment by clicking the plus. So I have assignment and I added a new assignment. And when I did that, it dropped it right here. I called it Friday is fun. And so we have the blank canvas for creating a brand new assignment. And I clicked, I can click edit. And using my rich content editor, I can start from scratch. And so I can build, type, and insert using my rich content editor. I then jumped to an assignment that I had already created and had content in it. So I'm gonna go back to my module and this fun Friday assignment is where I landed. It was an assignment I had created and I clicked edit to show you the process of what it looks like to create from scratch. And then what happens when we have content that the district has pushed out to us and we need to edit it. The process is exactly the same and the rich content editor works exactly the same. I hope that's helpful. I think that was the biggest one on uh, on my side. I don't know, Jill. Yeah, and we're doing well here. I also had a little bit, oh, it's going so fast. Um, but they seem to be um, feeling pretty good. Just the biggest thing, again, is that rich content editor not in the red bar account. Yes. So unfortunately, the, the free accounts have some nuances to them. Um, but you, and you don't have access to that if your free account has the red bar on the side. Okay, so we're gonna give you a minute to sit with this and to practice. I'm gonna go back to our presentation and hit present. And we're gonna play a song and hopefully you are in your account and you are able to practice creating an assignment and then opening the rich content editor and maybe adding a sentence and trying to uh, bring in a video or an image or a link. So here we go.
All right, hopefully you had a chance to jump into your rich content editor and give that a try. And we do have a chat question for you. So before we go on, which icon in the rich content editor allows us to import a video from studio or our Google Drive? So will you go ahead and drop the answer to that question in the chat? Which icon in the rich content editor allows us to import a video from studio or from our Google Drive? Shelly, while all of those are coming in, there was a question that I was reading that went away in my chat, but it was about, is can I section off um, a piece of a video and bring it in? Yes, we have limited editing, like video editing capabilities within the Canvas platform. But if you use something outside of Canvas, such as Loom or your YouTube editor, or if you have a video editing software, and you take care of it outside of the platform and bring that in, but we don't have great video editing capabilities from within the platform. Thank you. I would agree, uh, Shelly. I think I've seen a lot of people use Loom. Uh, they play the video on their desktop and um, basically do kind of a, a recording of what they're watching uh, and then share that. That helps. Okay, well, it looks like we were close to 100% on our icon, the plug. And that is where we grab our apps. And so now we are going to take a five minute stretch break. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to grab a little more caffeine or just stand up and stretch, get some blood flowing. And we will come back at 228. 228. So we'll play some music while you take a stretch, and I'll see you back in just a minute.
All right, it's been about five minutes. We are gonna go ahead and jump back in. So let me get set up here, turn on my video, kind of exit the presentation, and we're gonna go back to our assignment. So I'm just going back to my platform. I'll give everyone a second to kind of come back with us. And remember, this is the assignment that I had just added content to. And as we were working through the rich content editor, I added some components as I was moving through. So as I scroll down, you'll see there's content here. And then underneath my assignment, I have my assignment settings. There are a lot of different assignment settings. Uh, but these are pieces that you're going to need to take a look at even from the content that's pushed out from the district. So there may be content that you're not allowed to edit because that was created and pushed out. However, you will be able to edit the settings and determine the point value that works best for you and for your students. And you'll be able to edit actually all of these features down here. So whether it's a new assignment that you've created or it's an assignment being pushed out to you, you're gonna to want to know these assignment settings. It's also how we're going to connect the assignment to the category it lives in within the grade book. So I'm just gonna walk straight down the assignment settings so that you know what they do. Here are my points, I can change the point value. It might come to you with a zero point value, it might be blank. It might have a point value already existing. We just type in the box and tell Canvas what we want the value of this assignment to be. Now, right now it says points and that's what it's gonna look like in my grade book. But if I want it to display differently to the student, I have that option here. So I can change that to a percentage, complete or incomplete, a letter grade. I have some options as far as how that displays. Now, I did skip a box as I jumped down here because those two are connected. This middle box, I'm actually going to take a separate step after we're done with this and walk through this assignment group process because this is how we create categories within our gradebook. And so if I click the drop down menu, what you're seeing right now are all my current assignment groups. And so if I chose vocabulary, this assignment is going to live in my grade book in the vocabulary section. So hopefully that makes sense. But again, I'm going to dive deeper in this piece in just a minute. So I'm going to choose the group that the assignment is going to live with in my grade book. I have the ability here, if I check this box, to not count this assignment towards the final grade. So if this is say, a formative assessment or even a formative assignment, I can assign the assignment, I can send it out, I can pull it back in and grade it, I can offer feedback, and in the end, this assignment will not be counted in that final grade calculation. So again, if you check the box, then it won't count it towards the final grade. When I first create an assignment, it usually defaults on the submission type as no submission. And the submission type is just how the student is going to turn in this assignment. We will have two spaces that we live in. The first one is online. And so I'm going to walk through what each of these boxes means. If I click next to text entry, then when students turn in this assignment, it's just going to be a box for them to type their information into. It's just text. And so they'll have a space where they can type and that will be the only way that they can submit this assignment. If I check the box next to website URL, that just means web address, students can insert the web address of either an outside website or this is where we have our first touch back into a student's Google Drive. So remember in our Google Drive, when we create a document, each document or slideshow or sheet has its own web address in the URL bar. So this would allow a student to go into their Google Drive, create a document or a slideshow, and they can copy and paste the web address into the submission so that you are able to click the link 
and see their Google Doc. It's probably not the most efficient way, but it is a first touch as we look to the first few weeks of school. And we will dive deeper into what it looks like to make copies. This is not making a copy, but it is allowing a student to go into their Google Drive, create something, and then turn it in using the web address. Right now, I have two different online entry types selected. This means a student will be able to choose which method they want to submit the assignment or turn it in. If I choose, if I select the media recordings box, they now have three options for how they will submit this assignment. That means they, they get to choose. Really, it's no extra effort on our part as a teacher because when we use the speed reader and we go into the gradebook, they're all going to show up in the same place. So I don't have to worry if I give my students a choice that it's gonna cause me to have to go to multiple places within Canvas to grade these assignments. That's not the case. They will all populate in the same space. So if I allow a student to add a media recording, they have the ability to do what we did in our assignment where we can create a video on the spot or they can add a media recording as a submission for their assignment. File uploads would really be for something like a PDF or a Microsoft document or a PowerPoint. Um, but since we really live with the Google universe, this is probably not gonna be a feature we use very often. So speaking of Google, and the one item I'm sure you're all most interested to know is how do I get Canvas to make a copy for each student of a Google Doc? We will dive into that. Again, that is going to be the specifics of a later training so that you get to see exactly on our platform what that looks like. But know that that lives here in the external tool. And that is where we'll connect to the app that will then make an assignment or a copy for every student. Again, it lives here in the external tool and we will come back to this piece later. So I'm gonna just make sure this right now is available for me to save as we move forward. Now I have options on how many times a student is allowed to submit this assignment. So it typically defaults to unlimited. So when I first create the document and I jump down into my settings or my assignment, these settings it typically defaults to unlimited. So if I only want them to be able to submit it once, I have to choose limited and then choose how many times I'm going to allow them to submit this assignment. Canvas does keep each submission separately, so it doesn't erase the first one when they submit the second one. If you allowed them five attempts, you would see all five attempts, and then you would get to decide which one you're going to take. So this is just how many times a student can submit an assignment. This group assignment piece is one way that you could um, differentiate your instruction for students. I'm not gonna dive too deep, but I will show you that if you check the box, you have the ability to set up groups by yourself or you can allow the computer to set them up. And so just know that that's here. There's also a way to do that within your people groups and just how we, who we assign this assignment to. Okay. Our next box is peer reviews. So this is, especially because I know I have junior high, um, a lot of people here. As I think about allowing students to um, just peer review essays or written work and provide feedback, this is a nice tool. If I click here, I can manually assign students to review another student's work. So. I could uh, tell Canvas that I want Jill to review Jason's essay, or I could allow the computer to automatically create that uh, peer review by telling it how many times or how many different submissions students need to review. And I also have the ability to make that anonymous. So whether I manually assign that or I allow the computer to do it, the, the program, I can make that anonymous. So even though I'm assigning Jill to read Jason's essay, Jason will never know who read his essay. I will as the teacher, 
but the student will never know who read that or provided the feedback. So that's an option here by choosing um, peer reviews appear anonymously. We probably will not be utilizing the anonymous grading very often, so I'm not going to dive into that. But here I am now after, I'm gonna start back at the top, creating in my rich content editor or revising or adding to my content. And then I've worked through the settings, the points, how it displays, how students can turn in this assignment, how many times they can turn in this assignment. And now I finally am going to assign it. So it typically here will default to everyone and that's what you will see. But you have the ability as you saw to remove that. You could assign this to one student. You could assign this to a group of students. I currently only have one student in this course. It's my test student. Um, but you can differentiate your assignments. You could create one master assignment, make a copy of it, modify it, and then send the new one out to different groups of students as a way of differentiating. So this is where we choose who this assignment is for. And then we need to give it a due date and a time. So this right now is currently due August 21st, 1st at 11.59. If I click on the calendar, I can change that date and I can change that time. So if I wanted that to be 5 p.m., I could. Uh, typically with online submissions, we leave it at 11.59. That's just been a very standard practice. And last but not least, since this was a Friday fun assignment, maybe I only want this assignment open on Friday. And maybe I only want it available from eight to five. And so it'll open at eight and it will be closed at five. I can do that here with the available from by clicking the calendar, clicking a date and adding a time. And so let's say this is gonna be eight o'clock AM and then I can click the calendar on the other side and I can close it, let's say at 5 p.m. And so now this assignment is only available during those times. Okay, I'm actually gonna remove those really fast. If I can, before I go on. And actually it doesn't matter. The last thing I need to do is save my assignment. So I'm going to save it. That's why I wanted to remove them. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Let me get rid of these. Okay. And so now I'm going to save my assignment. Let's see if this will work. There we go. So now my assignment is saved. Because it was already published, I didn't have that option to save and publish at the very bottom. If my assignment had never been published, so I'm unpublishing it right now, and I went to the bottom of my settings, letting this populate. I now have the option at the bottom to save so that I can work on it later, or if I'm completely finished, I can save and publish from right here, and it will go live, and the students are able to work on it. Now let's say I send out the assignment, and I find a great video or an activity or even a scaffold for my students that I want to add into my assignment, but I've already published it and students are already working on it. That's okay. We walk through the same process. We open the assignment, we click edit, we add that piece to the rich content editor. And then when we come down to save and publish again, here at the bottom, I have the ability to notify my students that I have added or changed the content of this assignment. So just in case they've been working on it or maybe they were already done with it and I changed something, if I check this box in the lower right hand corner and then hit save and publish, it will notify the students that something in that assignment has been changed. So that was another big piece. I'm gonna stop right there and take some questions. Shelly, the um, biggest question, I've had several questions about um, pictures and screenshots and how do, how do, how did those get uploaded? 
So those are going to be definitely some pieces that as teachers we'll have to walk through with our students on camera. So the Chromebooks have the ability to, um, the cameras will be turned on so they'll be able to take a picture from the camera on their Chromebook or they'll be able to screenshot with their Chromebook. That's a great question for the Q&A as far as getting you the details or the step-by-steps, how students can do those pieces. Um, but we will need to show them how, the, how they can do that on their end. Um, the fastest thing that I can think of is if they're using their phone um, or they're using a device, they can also upload that photo to their Google Drive and then they can just give you the web address in the website URL down here at the bottom. If I allow the, oops, let me edit. If I allow them to submit via website URL, then they could just load that photo into their Google Drive and they can give you the web address now for that photo. So that's just a small hack. Um, but specific step-by-steps, we probably need to um, go ahead and put that in the Q&A and get back to. My other question was, um, is there a possibility for you to show us this in the student view? Like what would students sure. see when you create this? That is a great idea. So let me go ahead and hit save. And I'm going to come to my home page. Um, I did publish this assignment, but what I don't know is if this module was published. So hold on, because the module has to be published for the assignment to show up. Okay, so I'm going to go to my home page. And I'm going to come over here on the right to student view and click student view. And this is my current course. Where did the module go? I'm looking. I'm not seeing it. Maybe this is not available. Give me just a second to double check. End my screen time. Um, yeah, modules are not currently visible to students. You see this little eye here? I have to actually change that setting to show it to you. Um, but after your next task, I can do that and take care of it, and then I'll be able to show you. So I will come back to it, but I'm going to give you time to work so we're not wasting time. So I'm actually going to go back to the slideshow and give you a few minutes to work with your settings. And then while you do that, I will actually stop sharing my screen and try to finagle that on the back end and hopefully come back to it. So we'll give you three minutes to go ahead and work on the assignment that you created and playing with the settings at the bottom of the assignment. Oops, let's try that again, shall we?
Okay, hopefully you had an opportunity to jump into your uh, teacher account, your free account and practice with those settings and just what they look like and what they do. I'm going to ask if there are any other questions as I jump back into my Canvas platform. Uh, several questions, Shelly, in the Q&A doc. Um, one was a, a, a Google Drive integration question. So uh, going back to assignments, can I move from one assignment to the next like I do in Google Classroom? Or do I have to click on the, the hyperlink? You know, does it work similarly to Google Classroom was one question. Um, the, I don't know if we want to answer that now or get back to it. The short answer is yes. When we get to the Google uh, Assignments app integration and that specific training, you will be able to grade just as you did in Google Classroom. Uh, another one, um, if I place an availability restriction on an assignment, does that affect the attempts a student has to complete the assignment? So even can they still work on it even after it's uh, not available? No. So once we remove the availability, they won't be able to submit it to the best of my knowledge. They, if you gave them two attempts, uh, during that time, they would have that time span to submit that assignment and then it would be closed unless you took that limitation off. That's the best of my knowledge at this point. Um, a really good one that uh, I, I know that it's possible some places, I don't know each place, but can students uh, or do teachers have the option of changing languages for assignments? Uh, can students do it on their own page? Uh, we have a lot of Punjabi speakers. Um, I know that that's possible in studio when I'm creating videos, but I don't know on the student's side uh, with like a specific assignment. So this, I'm, it's not here. I was looking really fast. The students, anything that's placed into the rich content editor. So we have typed it in, not if I've added a Google doc or a PDF to this assignment, but if I physically typed it into the rich content editor, the students will have a tool called Immersive Reader that's available through Canvas that will be able to read that or translate that text for them. But again, it has to be directly typed into the rich content editor. It won't read from a Google Doc. If you want a translation tool for a Google Doc, we, then we would suggest um, using the free uh, Google Read Write, and it will do the same thing. It will actually read from the computer screen in a different language for them. So inside Canvas, we want to type the text in the rich content editor and students will be able to use the immersive reader. I hope that answers that question. I think that's a good start. Okay, right. Thank you, Shelley. Mm -hmm. I took the, the time while you were working to make sure that my modules were visible to students. And so now I'm going to go back and just show you what the assignment looks like from student view before we move forward. So to get to student view, I go to the home page and I come down here on the right and I click student view. And now you see that my modules are available for the student. So this is the home page for the course. These are the buttons that were built in that we won't manipulate. This is what the banner looks like for this course. And if the student clicks on modules, this is what they see. I published two modules just so we could see some things. This was the Friday fun assignment that I was working on and now I'm wondering, yeah, there we go. So this is what that assignment currently looks like to the student. Obviously I had a jumbled mess at the top there, um, but they're able to then at the bottom just click next to go to the next place uh, or the next assignment in the module. So that's what it looks like for the student and notice they have their blue submit assignment button up here in the upper right hand corner. They see the due date, they see how much it's worth, the ways that they can submit, how many attempts they have and how many they've taken. So that's the student view of the assignment. Okay, so now we have to put our heads in a little bit different space because we need to switch gears to grading these assignments. So we've created them or modified them or modified the settings at the bottom because they were created for us. And we need to think about 
how we want these grades to look on Canvas and in our Synergy gradebook. So this morning I created this uh, visual because at the beginning of the year, we have to set up our gradebook and we are still using Synergy. And when you go to the Synergy gradebook setup, this is the page you land on here at the top. And we see assignment types and the two standard or uh, standard issued assignment types from the district are assignments and summative assessment. And this is where we have the ability to change the assignment type or category and then weight those different assignment types in Synergy. The process looks very similar in Canvas. I do that though in assignments, which may not be intuitive. So from the assignments tab, I have the ability to create what Canvas calls assignment groups. So in Synergy, it's an assignment type. In Canvas, it's an assignment group. And so I created assignments and assessments and I do have the ability, as you can see, to weight my assignment groups. And so I'm going to show you how to do that process right now, but I wanted you to have the visual concept of what we're about to walk through. So if I go to the grades in my course, nope, sorry, scratch that. If I go to assignments, because that's where I was starting, let me let that spin for a second. And I'm going to go to my assignments. Well, notice as it populates that my assignments page looks just like my modules page. I have these gray bars across the top, but these are my assignment groups because I am now in assignments. I am not in modules. I have the same functionality. I can collapse or expand my different assignments within these groups. I can add an assignment group by clicking the plus and not an assignment, I did it again, clicking in the wrong spot. I can add an assignment group by clicking the plus group and I can give it a name. Um, we'll just call this one a test and I could give it a weight if that was the case. I'll just do zero for now and hit save. And just like your modules, it populates at the bottom of your list. And you can manipulate or move these around in the same manner. And you have the same settings, just like you do within your modules. So what I'm doing in this section with an assignment group is I'm tying an assignment to the group. And currently, you see I have them weighted because you see the weight right here. And if you weight your assignment groups, students will see the weights in their own gradebook. So if you have these showing on your screen, students will also be able to see those on their screen. So when we first start out with our assignments, we don't have group or we don't have weights. It's just a points based system. That is the default. So it just defaults to points. So if you do nothing, your gradebook will most likely just be points. And it will be, you might have these categories, but if you don't know how they work, your assignments might just be jumbled up in one place. So I want to first look at what I have here. I added assignments, I added all of this category group, and then I connected each one of these assignments to this group. And I did that in my assignment settings. So remember when we were editing our assignment at the bottom, and I'm gonna hit edit, so that's what I did. I just clicked on an assignment, and down here at the bottom, now this is a quiz and that's okay. It looks exactly the same. I'm going to make sure that this, is, this quiz or this assignment is connected to the right group. Where do I want this to live? Currently, it's living in assignments, but I see this as a quiz. So maybe I want it to go now to assessments. And so I hit save. And when I go back to my assignments, the computer's feeling Friday as well, apparently. If I expand my assessments, you'll see that I have brought that now here into my assessments. And so I need to make sure in my assignment settings that I have associated that assignment with the correct assignment group. 
And then if I want to weight these, I click on the settings for all of my assignments up here in the upper right hand corner and I click assignment groups weight. And then I have to tell the system, yes, I want to weight my final grades based on these groups. And at this point, I can set the weights for each of these sections. And then I would just click save. And now you see that the weighting shows here in the bar for these assignment groups. Are there any questions on assignment groups? The chat's looking pretty good right now. Uh, okay. So there's a, um, the weighting question, um, do we weight the 90-10 district grade policy here or do we do our, do our system here and then apply it to uh, the uh, kind of the age old story of, you know, the synergy uh, is definitely that 90-10 split and how do we, um, you know, make our system work here in Canvas or not? So I, it would be best to make your systems match. So if Synergy is 90-10 and that's our final grade reporting, we know our district grading policy has not changed. So if those are our only two assignment types in Synergy, then I would only have those two assignment types here in my course. And I would just categorize my assignments and assessments and tie those to the appropriate group so that they are weighted correctly. And then when I put those grades back into Synergy, it's really just a quick 10 key of adding those back into Synergy because our final reporting will be done through Synergy. So grades and report cards and progress monitoring, that's all still going to live in Synergy, but my parents and my students are gonna be living in Canvas. And so you'll see here in a second, grading in Canvas is really not only easy, uh, but efficient and allows me a lot of options for providing feedback. And so I know I did this with my Google Classroom. I kept all my grades in Google Classroom and then I just went back to Synergy as soon as I had a moment and made Synergy match what was going on in my Google Classroom. So that's kind of how I handled it. All right, so I wanna come back to my slide deck and I want to show you, I'm going to skip our task because we're running um, late in our session here, but you have the speed grader video. If you watched last week's session, I showed the video and then I walked through speed grader and it's a great tool, but again, I don't have student submissions of work to walk through this piece with you. And so this video is not only here in the slide deck, but it's also linked in your agenda take the opportunity to watch it. It's a great tool. I think you'll find it's very useful, um, but we're not gonna go through it right here today. I am going to jump back to my course and go to grades. So this is where it all comes together is in my grade book. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and remove a couple things so you see what it looks like when you first jump in. So give me just a second. So this is my grade book. If I scroll across the bottom, these are all of the assignments and assessments, anything that has a grade attached to it. And you notice I could probably scroll on forever because this particular course had quite a bit that came with it. Each one of these columns has its own settings. So you'll notice as I hover in that box, the three ellipses appear here, and I can click on those and I have some options. So if we're thinking about the way Synergy shows our students in our gradebook, we have the same options here. We can sort by the name or SSID. We can change the alphabetical order we can also choose, am I going to see the student's first name and then their last name or their last name and then their first name? And if I want their name and their uh, SSID to show, I can choose that option here. So this is just how I view my students in the gradebook. If I want to look at the settings for an assignment, I can now sort my gradebook by this one assignment and the grade for it. So whether that's high to low, low to high, 
or missing or late, I can sort that so I'm viewing my grade book by that assignment. Now notice here, I have speed grader. This is why I would, if I'm grading, come right here to grades and do all my grading from the grade book because I really don't have to leave the platform to not only grade, but offer students feedback in real time. So if I clicked speed grader, it would open up speed grader in a separate tab. And at that point, I would be able to go through and grade every submission from every student on that assignment. I can make comments, I can add the grade, and it will drop that all back into my gradebook. Here's where I have the ability to send feedback to students very quickly from within my gradebook. I don't have to leave. So I can send a message to students who haven't submitted their assignment yet. So maybe I'm trying to give them a gentle nudge. Hey, this is a big project. You only have two days left. I could do that by choosing haven't submitted yet. And I could type them an encouraging message, hoping that they are able to get that completed on time or just remind them that it's even due. And this message would send to any student that meets this criteria has not submitted yet. I also have the ability to send to these other categories. So let's say a student scored less than proficient, whatever that grade or uh, whatever that looks like for you, I can put in the points. So if this assignment was out of 10 and they only received a five, I could send a message to all students who scored less than five and provide them a scaffold or maybe a time that I'm gonna set up a small group with them, but I can send that message from right here inside my gradebook. So I love that feature about the Canvas gradebook. I have the ability to curve grades and to set a default grade. We are not gonna go into that right this second. Um, and I'm going to actually come over to this assignment because you see right here that there is an I with a line through it. And so I'm going to, right now, this particular assignment with the eyeball and the line through it is not visible to my students. I have turned the visibility off. I would do that personally. I would do that when I'm grading assignments that take a while to grade, uh, just so my students aren't talking back and forth. Hey, what did Ms. Tiffin give you? Oh, well, she already graded my assignment. Oh, well, she hasn't graded mine yet. I wonder why. Just to stop the chatter in the background, especially if it was a longer piece to grade. And so I would turn off that visibility here and this would change. So right now I'm going to turn it on. So I'm going to post this grade and you'll notice that the eyeball is going to disappear. When the system has a chance to process. And then if I wanted to hide this grade, it's the same process. I click on settings and now it says hide grades. And so I would just choose hide and then I'm going to go through the little warnings, click okay, and it's going to hide that grade. So that's just how we manually hide and post grades from within the grade book. I can click on the grade and actually manually type in a grade uh, let's make this 10 out of 10. And I can add a status to this grade from right here. I clicked the arrow and I can deem this late. I could manually just enter missing or excused. And I can even leave a comment right here in the gradebook on this particular student and this particular assignment. So those are the settings for the student and how we view the gradebook and the assignments themselves and the options that we have. I'll let that finish spinning. Um, but to reduce the number of assignments that I'm working with when I jump into my gradebook, because right now there's just too many, I can go to view. And I can arrange all of these assignments, just like I did my students, um, by the name or the due date. So I have the ability to put them in the order in these different methods, these different ways. I also have the ability to filter, so really narrow the scope of what I'm seeing. And I can do that by filtering for ass assignment groups. 
and I can choose the assignment group. So maybe I only want to look at the assessments group right now. And so right now there are two currently assignments that are attached to my assessment group category. And now that's all I see, just those two assignments. And you'll see my assessment groups are populating here with their appropriate weights and what the student is currently scoring in each of those categories. So that's a filter. And if I wanted to narrow it even more, I can either choose a different filter or I can add these two filters on top of each other. And I do that by just clicking on the second filter. So maybe I only want to see the assessments in the first week. And so now I have reduced my view to just the one assignment. If I go back and remove these filters, you'll notice that I had some colors. Let me get rid of this in my assignments. These are like the statuses. I showed you that earlier, but if you want to change the colors of what these mean, it's here in view and I click on statuses. So here is where I'm able to change the color. That's really all I'm able to change. Um, but if I want late to be an orange and missing to be a different color, I can select that color or I can add the hex code here and hit apply. And then it will change that color for that status. And I think the last thing we need to think about with our gradebook is how visible do we want this for students? Do I want grades to just post automatically as soon as I'm finished grading? Or do I wanna take care of that manually? That's just a personal preference, but I want you to know where you can take care of that. So I clicked, let me go back, here on the wheel in the upper right-hand corner for settings. And you can walk through all these other pieces later, but I'm just gonna point out the grade posting policy. And this is where, when I'm looking at individual assignment grades, do I want them to automatically post or do I wanna be the one who has control over posting them? And so you can decide that for yourself and make that selection here in the grade posting policy. And then I would hit update, but I'm just gonna leave it at manual for now. So that's, there's more to Gradebook, but as far as getting through our first few weeks together and getting school started and just making sure we don't have more work on the back end when we get into the grading, what you really need to know right now to move forward. So with that, do we have any questions on the Gradebook? Shelly, for me, the biggest um, worry or question is about um, Synergy and Canvas not syncing with one another, and what if what if they parents see something in Canvas but see something different in Synergy? So that's a concern. Yeah, that's where I would just work. I personally would work very hard to make my grade books match. So that's why I showed you the assignment groupings and making sure your groups and the setup and the structure and the weights look the same. Your final grades have to be reported in Synergy. I'm not sure what that looks like because I don't want to give mixed messages or mixed signals about only putting in a final grade. Um, I don't know that that's really our message either because our students know to go to Synergy and that's where they're going to see their grades. Our parents know that we post grades there, but they're also going to be coming here looking for their feedback. So I do think it's important that we align them as much as possible. Yeah, I think Shelly, for us Q&A doc, pretty similar um, about, you know, do we transfer grades or not? And you, you hit on some of the subtleties of how we might design it so that it's the feedback mechanism and the communication mechanism versus the, the, uh, the final grade, or maybe the grade books are identical. Um, and then there's a question about um, assignments that we can get back to uh, as soon as we wrap up here, um, I think that's uh, it's going to wrap us up for the Q and A doc. There have been some technical. Uh, oh, screenshots! Uh, are students going to be able to screenshot on their Chromebooks? Um, I don't recall whether they 
have that turned on or not previously? I don't know. We'll have to find out and get back to you on that one. It, it was turned off in this, um, since at, in March, okay. I believe. We can definitely follow up, uh, Mary, on that question. Absolutely. Okay, so we've kept you 15 minutes after time. I'm gonna go ahead and head back to our slide deck. We have a few things to take care of. We would love to know in the chat, um, what was your favorite learning from today? What was your biggest takeaway? So if you were gonna tweet that out in a small phrase, what would that look like? Can you drop that in the chat? And we also have our feedback form while you are dropping those uh, tweets about your learning today. We have our feedback link. Remember, we always wanna to work to make these better. Um, we are looking to improve everything that we do. So your feedback helps with that process. And we don't want you to leave before you sign out. So we have these last three things to take care of. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my chat so I can see what you all are saying. Lots of great comments. Assignment groups are cool. And while you're doing that again, we just want to say thank you. We know this is a Friday afternoon. We know you've had a really long week, um, but we appreciate you taking the time and the mental capacity to learn this and to wrap your head around it. We think it will be great. We think you'll really like the features, especially of the grading piece um, as we presented to you today. And so we look forward to continuing to support you in this process as you continue to learn and we all continue to grow. Happy Friday, everyone. Thank Happy you Friday. for hanging around. <laughs>